can for all my sin Your body crucified To make me whole again I will recall the cup Poured out in sacrifice Salvation's roar with fear and trembling. Your way born as my own, as Christ is formed in me. If ever I should lose my way, if ever I deny your grace, remind me of the price you paid. Hallelujah, I live in reach from the depths as far as east is from the west so far your grace has carried me until I see you face to face until at last I've won my race remind me you're not Good Friday. It almost seems ironic to call it Good Friday. As a follower of Jesus, I get it. His death on the cross allows me, the one who deserves death for my sins, to not have to die, to not have to suffer, to not get what I deserve. That is good, very good news, but what Jesus had to do for this to be good is anything but good. It was bad, very bad, downright awful what they did to Jesus, or rather what my sin, 
and what your sin did to Jesus. I don't like to think about that when I approach this day, but I think our hearts need to go there today. So after he was captured late Thursday night, he was brought before the Jerusalem courts on trial for, well, that was the problem. Every accusation brought against Jesus was completely false, taken out of context, and had no proof. Yet his defense against the conspiracies, the exaggerations, the lies, silence. He didn't say a word. He didn't defend himself. He didn't jump on Twitter to call it the fake news. Nothing. And then the beatings. 39 lashes from a whip that had spikes at the tip, a crown of thorns shoved into his skull. And this doesn't include the cheap shots, the taunting, the spitting in his face from the guards. And then to the cross. The long journey up the mountain carrying this 100 pound plus instrument of death nails driven into each hand, putting his feet one on top of the other and putting a nail through the both of them, securing his helpless, bruised, disfigured body to the most gruesome form of capital punishment in the Roman Empire, left up there to now suffocate to death. Not an instant death, but a long, torturous death, feeling the wounds, the stripes, the pain, and slowly losing his breath. How can any of this be good? How can an innocent man dying be good? You know, Jesus' death is commonly referred to as his sacrifice. Intrinsic in the idea of sacrifice is that you give up something or you endure something hard in order for something better, something good and worthwhile. So what's worthwhile? What's good for King Jesus to sacrifice like this? Well, I think we find the answer at the creation of the world. As God the Father speaks the world into existence, God the Son, Jesus Christ, is present in the forming of Adam and Eve. He uses his hands to mold, shape, create, and give life, literally breathe life into Adam and Eve. And even in his creation, he knew that the ones he formed would one day turn away from him. Not only them, but their billions and billions of descendants. Yet do you remember how he ended his creative process? He said it was good, it was very good. His good creation, you and I, all of humanity, was so good to him that he was willing to sacrifice his life to have that good moment once again. Perfect relationship with his creation. But not just a moment, a lifetime. His sacrifice offers that to us. It restores us to the good he has always desired for us, what he's created us for. But in those crucifixion moments, as a few family and spectators watched it, didn't look good, didn't feel good, didn't seem good. Yet as we reflect today, we can be reminded of the good of the King's sacrifice, the good of his creation. But may it cause us to repent of the not so good that we allow to rule and reign over us. May it cause us to see the bad, the sin that plagues our hearts and minds. May we confess it to our good King, realizing that he endured extremely bad consequences on our behalf. You know, it's not a day to feel guilty or ashamed because our guilt and shame was put to death that day. But today is a day to be reminded of the relentless pursuit to enjoy the good relationship our King wants for us. And in this pursuit, or rather in Him alone, we can find the good in this Good Friday.
once was lost, I walked away. The road was dark, I could not see. My hope was gone, the pain was real. But your mercy, you saw my steps. Felt my fears, you heard my cries, you caught my tears. Arms open wide, you ran to me with your mercy. Your mercy, your mercy. I stand before my King and bow my heart to sing. You saved me, you raised me, you died so I could live. No greater love than this, Your mercy. You gave me life. Beyond the grave, my deepest shame is cast away. You sing a song that covers me. It's your mercy, your mercy, your mercy. I stand before my King. I bow my heart to sing. You saved me. You raised me. You died so I could live. No greater love than this. Your mercy. Your Your loving kindness it leads me to repentance. Your loving kindness it leads me to repentance. Lord, let your kindness. Let it lead us to repentance, Lord. Let Your kindness, oh, lead us to repentance. 'Cause it's Your mercy, Your mercy. I stand before my King. I bow my heart to see You save me. You raised me. You died so I could live. No greater love than this. Your mercy. Your mercy.